there. When we approached a park, we saw some stalls where vendors were selling merchandise to Japanese soldiers. I remember seeing a shoe repair stall and a barber shop. There's something I'd very much like to ask you. I understand you had a seal made. Yes. At a shop that sold seals, I was encouraged to have one made commemorating our entry into Nanking. I ordered one made from water buffalo horn. They told me it would not be ready until the next day, so I went by myself to pick it up. I still have it. This is Mr. Kondo's seal on the screen. Yes, this is my seal. Since you were able to order that seal, it must have been very peaceful and calm in the city. I can't believe that thousands of people were being slaughtered every day, as some say they were, when people were conducting their business so peacefully. Thank you very much. The supply line for Japanese soldiers advancing to Nanking was undependable. The men were forced to obtain food locally. Critics often claim that this exigency led the soldiers to confiscate or steal food. Mr. Saito Toshitane, then a headquarters staff member with the 18th Infantry Brigade from Tsuruga, will speak to us on this topic. What was the food situation during your travels from Shanghai to Jintan and Nanking? After November 15th, when the Shanghai conflict ended, we attacked Kunshan and then pursued the Chinese retreating towards Nanking. Until we reached Jintan on about December 2nd, we had enough food. But then our troubles began. It was hard to find food for the men on the front line and for the headquarters staff. Once you arrived in Jintan, your supply stopped coming then. What was the policy for requisitioning food? We had received instructions from brigade headquarters, which we obeyed. I made a list of the instructions that I remember. First, procurement was to take place at locations within sight of headquarters, for safety's sake. Second, we were to restrict requisition of food in inhabited areas to one-third of whatever was available. We were cautioned not to take too much. Third, we were not permitted to break into unoccupied homes. We were authorized to take half of whatever we found outside a residence. When we did so, we were instructed to post a voucher at the site. Fourth, we were instructed to leave a list of items that we had confiscated so that the pacification unit would know how much to pay residents who submitted a claim. I relied on my recollections of the voucher used then to prepare this facsimile. The top line says item and the bottom says amount. The voucher is divided into two sections, A and B. In the A section it says, to receive payment for the items taken, take this voucher to the pacification unit of the Japanese Army. The seal of headquarters, 18th Infantry Brigade, Imperial Japanese Army, is affixed to it. Column B contains the same information in Chinese. Our soldiers tore this voucher in half, affixing the Chinese half to the house and taking the other half with them. The system was set up so that payment could be made after the fact. That is correct. 
The fifth was, once you've taken the food, return to your unit. Then go to headquarters and submit the requisition goods and the itemized list for inspection. First Lieutenant Igarashi was the inspector. He checked to make sure that the items and amounts were correct. Even a small error would earn us a scolding. You could see how strict the authorities were about the items in column A being absolutely precise. Thank you very much. Yes, I kept a record of everything that happened. We were there until January the 27th. What type of work were you doing during that time? After we got settled, I started making round trips, about five in all, between depots in Shuakuang on the banks of the Yangtze River and a depot in Nanking. The trip was 10 kilometers each way. I was transporting food for the soldiers and hay for the horses in an army cart. For the men and the horses. During those round trips, did you see corpses of Chinese soldiers? I expected to see a few so I was on the lookout for them. But I never saw any. I didn't see any at Shakwan either. Not at Shakwan, no. I shot some 8mm film, so please have a look at it. Do you have any comments about the exhibits at the Nanjing Massacre Memorial Hall? I saw a souvenir album issued by the Memorial Hall. It was compiled many years after the war. It contains diagrams with X marks at dozens of roadside locations. Next to the X marks are numbers in the thousands and ten thousands, indicating the number of victims. I am certain that I passed those locations three times in a BMW sidecar confiscated from the Chinese troops. It was assigned to me at the military academy. No one ever mentioned anything about corpses in connection with the locations marked with an X. Those locations were totally clear when I passed them. I saw no signs of corpses, not even one. The residents of Nanking soon began returning to their homes. Could you tell us about that? As Mr. Kondo said earlier, I think it was about two or three days after I entered the city. Little by little, residents began returning. I was inconvenienced when the glass on my watch broke. I had a spare, but I took the watch to be repaired first thing. And I, too, had a water buffalo horn seal made. But honestly, I had forgotten completely about it until recently. Here is that seal. I remembered it when Professor Hata Ikuhiko, who specializes in the Nanking controversy, mentioned having noticed the imprint of the seal in some of my records.